G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy Podcast. Today, our podcast, like much of our content, is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Manscaped are the world leaders in male grooming products and they've recently launched the Lawnmower 4.0 Body Hair Trimmer. As you can see, it's got a little light on it to illuminate your nuts as you're shaving them and it's got a 90 minute battery runtime, so you can watch- Is that some skin safe technology I see there? It is, it's ceramic bladed so that you don't cut your nuts as you're shaving and you can do it for up to 90 minutes, so that's like two and a half quarters of a final this final series. What else does Manscaped have in their performance package this season? Well, if you'd like to stay fresh, you can use their reviving crop mop ball wipes. Mm. If you'd like a clean start, you can use their crop cleanser ball cleaner and body wash. I could go for some of that right now. If you're into foot stuff, you can use their foot dusting foot deodorant to make that area smell a bit more pleasant if the smell isn't part of your kink. We're trying very hard to drown out the dog. And after you've done all that and you need a finishing touch, use their refined cologne by Manscaped. This Father's Day, if you're looking for a great gift from your dad, you can get 20% off that product and free shipping by going to manscaped.com and using our exclusive code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word. You get a great discount, free shipping, and you'd be supporting the channel. Bloody earth. Let's get into the video. Let's talk about Carlton. They finished 13th with a record of 8 and 14 and a percentage of 88.5%. Positives. You go. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really think of any, really. There's some clear ones. So we, uh, Mackay. Yeah, Mackay, Mackay won the yeah. common. Mackay is the one. Yeah. Yeah. Mackay won, uh, won the common. 58 goals from 19 games. Um, uh, won it fairly comfortably despite playing, um, obviously missing some games with injury. Mm. Didn't play the last couple. He carried their forward line, really. Yeah. Um, which is a bit of a surprise because mm. the way that Charlie Kerno is sort of billed is, by the them as the next one, gun. Yeah. And then Harry Mackay, is, it's like... Was yeah, the fill out it, guy? Yeah, and it's, uh, yeah. I mean, he was still a top ten pick, mm. but um, it's hard to imagine Kerno being better now. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's just funny how that's worked out. Sam Walsh, potentially all Australian, um, quite conceivably yeah. all Australian. Brownlow, Smokey. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Jones and Weedering as defenders. Yep. Individually, were good. I don't know if they got their defensive unit as a whole yeah. on point this year, but um, individually, those guys were good. Um, and someone like a Matthew Kennedy, sort of. Yeah, um, Matthew Kennedy. He was I pretty good Matthew this year Kennedy. after. I think he fell out of the side at one yeah, point. Yeah, he came yeah. back in around, around mid teens. Yeah. Because I picked him up in fantasy as a bloody beautiful pickup. Mm, yeah, he's handsome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, that that's something that I really lacked, I think, is midfield support. So we were used to talk about it as Paddy Cripps, who's going to support Paddy Cripps. And yeah. now we're talking about who's going to uh, support yeah. Sam Walsh. And now you've got Teggy's manager coming out taking. Talking shit about Cripps. I haven't seen that. Oh, you didn't see that. Pickering came out saying like, yeah, Cripps has been shit. He's like got to pick up his game and all this stuff. Yeah, right. He was pretty scathing of him, really. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Teague's manager. Is yeah, because like, okay. yeah, it sounds like, well, the reason people are thinking is because Teague's trying to get fired now, they reckon. Yeah, so it's, I have noticed that Teague has uh, made a couple of public comments. Like uh, he didn't like how Carlton's review process, yeah. the outcome was announced in the media. It's like if a head coach is saying that, it doesn't sound yeah. like someone who's like yeah. invested in the organization yeah i think he's sort of seen the writing on the wall like even if they keep him another year he's probably screwed at the end of next year so he's sort of like fuck it yeah say what i think they got to pay me out if they sack me. <laughs> yeah well i was gonna go through the negatives first but yeah what, what would you do in terms of Teague? You, you kind of touched on it you think um i'd personally keep him the one more year and yeah. give him another sort of chance to build on it like he's had like a better record than like Clarkson and Hardwick did in their first 50 games. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I think the difference with Carlton is that uh, certainly when ha- uh, Hardwick and Clarkson took over, we're going back a while for Clarkson. I think that was about 2004, 2005. Yeah. We, there was no expectation on those clubs. Like I remember when Hardwick took over, there was talk at Richmond, we're not going to win a game that season. We ended up winning yeah. the spoon, and I remember fondly, <laughs> not fondly, that Jack Rewalt <laughs> kicked 10 goals on us in the MCG. Yeah. I'll never forget that. Hardwick... Just turn them yeah. over. You, it's hard to it's hard to just compare those numbers against Teague and say, oh, well, those guys did it, so Teague mm. could do it. Because we're talking yeah. about the two greatest coaches of the last 20 yeah. years, probably. Um, but the thing is with Carlton, they've never given coaches a good chance. Uh, like, yeah, I mean, Ratton was there for a while. Yeah, I guess. Do you mean, or you mean Bolton, really? Bolton mainly. Yeah. Um, oh, actually, a lot of Carlton fans think that Ratton was sacked prematurely as well. Mm. Be fair. Uh, I, I the, my point I started to make with, with Carlton is that the expectation is there. So that they've been rebuilding, they've gone through a couple of little rebuilds there. The Weetering pick one, Walsh pick one in that time. They lack senior quality 
for, and they have done for a while. But the expectation was this year was they were going to take a step. Mm. They traded in Sard and Williams on big money. That's the big disappointments. Like all these guys where they've blew it in on big contracts that have mm. done fuck all. They've been criticised for trading in three massive contracts for flankers. Williams, yeah. Sard, Jack Martin. Yeah. None of them have really fired. Yeah. Even the McGovern, like... Literally, the people, like even that. literally at the point, like I was scrolling Reddit before this and like the memes, like, yeah, people just take these contracts with Carlton and just like yeah. do fuck all and get good money. Well, so. hopefully Adam Jarrett does the same thing <laughs> from your perspective. Fucking oath. <laughs> um, yeah, so the continued bur- uh, burst of five, uh, conceding five goals and or a five goal swing as well is what Carlton still have an issue with under T, controlling momentum bursts. Second most points conceded in the league. So while I said that those individual defenders were doing well, they were actually quite a leaky defence as a unit. But that also comes down to midfield pressure and, and all that stuff as well. The negative is Crips not quite returning to the form in which they obviously hoped. And many people pegged that this would be the year. But I have no idea what's going on with his body. There's been a lot of smoke and mirrors about that. He is had Crips the back issues earlier in the year. Yeah. He's probably injured, to be honest. But nah. either way, it's a negative that he didn't quite recapture that form. Um and they only improved by one win on last year, ultimately, uh, with, with more games. So one win from an extra five games. The draft selections are 6, 25, and 61. So not a massively strong hold on the draft, especially if they're going to go for yeah. Chera. What, what do you think they should... Uh, if you're Carlton, put yourself at Carlton's shoes. Mm-hmm. Ignore Fremantle for a second. What would you give up for Chera? Pick six? That's the basis. The, I'd try If I was them, I'd try and go pick six and like a future second or something that's what i'd mm. sort of try and come into the negotiations on but realistically i'd be probably prepared to pay a little more really because he is out of contract don't forget which is a different mm. dynamic to your other players that have left Fremantle, and we are sort of treading into Fremantle territory here mm. but i do think pick six on its own i think Hartland will try and get out of paying that at all well apparently i was what i was reading about both teams are sort of acknowledged that sort of like the mm. going to be the basis of its pick six i think pick six is about right to mm. be honest yeah. I think we need a little more out of it. Yeah, but you don't have the bargaining power. Well, again, we, we're trading into Fremantle territory yeah. here. I think Chera would be yeah. an astute pickup for Carlton considering they need quality midfield depth. Mm. That's the biggest Achilles heel. Yeah. Um, obviously, Mark Murphy hasn't been the same player for a while now, but he's retiring. Um, Sam Walsh is emerging, and there's no yeah. one really to help pick up the slack. Matthew Kennedy, yes. Paddy Dow. Like, I think Chera is a lot more reliable as a prospect. So how would you grade their season? A plus. Yeah. I'd probably say... Oh, yeah, I found that Pickering quote. It was specifically, he reckons Cripps is no longer an A grader. Okay. And the way he's played the last two years has been very ordinary. He had 17 disposals, no kicks, negative three metres gained. Jeez, he's had a lot of injuries, a lot of excuses for injuries. That is quite scathing. What was the context, though? Because it It was him on trade radio. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It is quite scathing in any way you slice it anyway. Uh, I think a D-plus is probably about right. Yeah. Um, I think just to their expectations, they would have come in nowhere near it. I think I followed Blue Abroad. He's been a, on the podcast before. Uh, a great channel. Go check it out if you're a Carlton fan or even if you're not. I still, it's still worth watching um, Terry's <laughs> game reviews. I love, I love watching. He's very entertaining. Uh, but you, you can just tell they're very flat mm. as a fan base on, on that basis. And the lack of improvement yeah. despite individuals playing well. Uh, hasn't come. So yeah, I think my Carlton uh, supporting plus. friends have been fire tag one week, next week keep him, fire yeah. him, keep him. Yeah, that's it. 